In today's video, we explore using pastes, acrylic paint, and bubbles to create a one-of-a-kind piece of art. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to another video. So I took last week off to get caught up on a few things, but here I am back again, and I wanted to show you how beautiful this little sea turtle I found at Hobby Lobby turned out using a few simple products, one being acrylic paint, the second being CERN Relief from Pebio. That can be substituted with a marker if you want. You don't have to use that. And... Um, yeah, we're going to take some of this acrylic paint here. And before I get started, I want to teach you a little lesson about opacity. So anytime you buy an acrylic paint and it is shimmery, it's going to be a transparent color. And the reason why that is, is because the manufacturer has added mica into that color and if you have a color that is opaque, you're not going to be able to see the shimmeriness of the uh, mica. So those colors are typically transparent. Not typically, I believe always transparent, maybe semi-transparent. Now that I've brushed it on there, you can see how you can still see the lines, uh, the etched lines on, well, they're not etched really. They're just kind of burnt in a little bit on the thin, you can still see it through that shimmery paint. So now I come in with a secondary type of paint just to show you how if you have a truly transparent paint, which this lime green is, if you build up layers, you will eventually get full coverage and have a solid color. However, the easiest way to do this would be just to use an opaque color opaque is solid you cannot see through it such as this green color here now that I'm putting on top of the light green so the reason why I wanted to show you all of this to begin with is because in order for that green shimmery paint to look its best I need to put it on top of an opaque color I could have brushed it on, let it dry, brushed on a few more coats, but that stuff is expensive. So you're better off just painting the areas where you want to use it a somewhat matching color. I know this green is brighter, but it's still a green. Paint them that color first and then come in with your shimmery paint to put that on top. Now you're going to notice on the shell, you can still see the line work through the paint. I did that on purpose because I need to do some line work after and I needed to see where the gut, I needed those lines to guide me to do my guide, guide work. So that's why I left it really, really thin there. And how I did that was I added a little bit of water to my acrylic paint, my opaque acrylic paint, just to make like a little bit of a wash just to get that green color on the shell, but I'd still be able to see the guide where I need to do my line work. So I'm putting this gold green down on the areas where I'm going to be adding texture next. Even though I'm covering it with texture, you're gonna see it in the end product. So I needed that underneath my texture. And as for texture, there's so many things you can use for textures. There's fiber paste and extra coarse pumice gel, coarse texture paste. You can even take your own little glitter or these art stones by Bria Reese, add them into some clear glue or even white glue, smear it on your, your artwork, and when it dries, you'll have beautiful texture that you can then just kind of color in with an acrylic paint and it will look beautiful. You'll see more about that coming up here. I'm choosing to use this coarse textured gel first because you can combine them. That's what I like to do the most. So on the thins in the head, I wanted to have some texture. I wanted some very light texture and I wanted some really gritty texture. So all you have to do is take that paste, put it over the area where you want it, and then let it dry. By the way, I keep calling the turtles feet 
feet. <laughs> are they feet? Are they fins? I don't even know what those parts are. I just tend to look at the front flippers and the shell and the face and it's cute. And I don't know. <laughs> Do turtles have feet? <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, so now I'm taking my uh, paste and I'm just putting some on its little flipper feet. We'll call them. <laughs> And I'm going to, uh, once I have that all on the areas that I want it, I'm going to come back in with the extra coarse pumice paste. And I'm going to put that in random areas as well. You're going to notice on the head and the upper side there of the turtle that I left some areas bare. Um, I wanted to do that and I should have did that on the other side too, but it's fine. It, it all worked out in the end, but here's the pumice paste. Now this stuff is really, really thick. So you just slap it down on the surface, whether it's wood, canvas, whatever you're using, put it down and smear it out the best you can. It looks really good when you do it like I'm doing here. Just, you know, leave some areas without it. And uh, you'll see what a nice texture this creates when it's done, when it's dry. And by the way, this takes about 24 hours to dry. So I wanted to make this turtle for um, a specific reason. And you're going to be seeing that at the end of this video. But it's all about aquatics for me right now because I am starting a new saltwater fish tank. So... I figured I would make this cute little sea turtle while I'm inspired to do it. Inspiration doesn't come to me all the time. And, uh, you know, I, I try my best every week to put out a good video. But sometimes I get really, really inspired to make a really cool piece of art. And uh, this is one of them. So now I have my CERN relief from Pebio out. What I'm going to do is trace over these lines with this product. It's basically a 3D paste that you squeeze out and it just is going to make little sections on the shell for me stand out more. Uh, you don't have to have this. You can use a uh, marker if you want. I just like this because it does have height to it. And the next step of this project this will help me contain what I'm going to be doing in those little sections. If you find that your CERN relief little tube there is acting up on you, just like see right there, I missed a little area. Take the tip and rub it off onto your table or a paper towel, you know, whatever you're working on. I have a piece of a uh, tablecloth, paper tablecloth down that I work on top of. Clean off the tip and uh, it will start to work right again. And this stuff dries really quick. It took about, I'd say, two to three hours for it to dry. So I'm going to outline all of those sections there with this, let it dry, and then we're going to move on to the next step. And the next step is the best step. And this is what the outline looks like. Now, it's not going to be as predominant when it's done, but this is what it looks like for now. While this paste is drying, this has already dried. So I'm going ahead and work on the center area. And what I'm going to be doing there first is I'm going to be creating that bubble texture that I've been doing in the acrylic pores using just some Dawn dish soap with some water. I just agitated it with my little spray hose. You can use a straw to blow bubbles if you don't have one of those hoses. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some UV resin. I'm going to put it down in one area at a time. While it is still wet, I'm going to put some of the foam on top of the UV resin, cure it with the light for 60 seconds per section, and then wipe away the foam and you'll see the beautiful texture. All right, so that's the first step that we're going to be doing with that. Then we're going to come in and color things and make it look all pretty. All righty, so here we go. I'm going to just tell you that there's a link in the description of this video for a UV resin set that comes with the light, that comes with the UV resin. 
very inexpensive. It's, I think, maybe $25, and it's a, a great deal. You take some UV resin. Now, UV resin, you don't have to mix like regular resin. It's a UV resin. You cure it with a light. So all you have to do is open the bottle, put it down where you want it, and then spread it out and put your bubbles on top and cure it. It's not like regular resin where you have two bottles. You have to measure out each part and mix them together. No, it's already mixed in the bottle. So you pour some out into the section or whatever area that you're working on with your painting. Lay it out in the design that you want the bubble texture to be. Get your Dawn dish. So people, a few people have asked me, what kind of dish soap is it? It's just the, the kind you wash your dishes with. I don't know how to explain it more clearer than that. It's just regular dish soap of any brand. It doesn't have to be Dawn. Put a little couple of squirts of it in a bowl and then just fill it up like you're soaking a bowl. You'll get all the foam with the bubbles. That's what you want to lay into this wet resin. And what happens is, is that you cure it with the UV light and it leaves this really cool texture behind. So let me show you here. Spread out the UV resin, go to your bowl of bubbles, take the foam off of the top, lay it right on top of that wet resin and then cover the area that you put. You have to cover the entire area wherever there's UV resin that you put down you need to put foam on top of that area. You can't do a little section and then come back and do another section. I'm doing this center section on this shell all at once. So put your foam on there. And then once you have it covered, you want to come in with your UV light that comes with your kit and cure it for 60 seconds. So this is on time lapse here but I did cure it for 60 seconds. And then once you're done, remove your light, remove the foam with your spatula, put it back in your bowl because you can reuse it, pat it off with a paper towel, and you're going to end up with the most amazing looking texture in the world, in my opinion. <laughs> I'm a texture freak. It looks just like a scale pattern. How cool is that? So here, I'll do one more small section with you. I'm not going to bore you doing the entire shell, but essentially what I'm going to be doing is that pattern inside of each of those sections I created on the shell. So take the UV resin, spread it out in the area that you want, and put the foam on it, cure it for 60 seconds, wipe it away, and voila, you're done. Now, what's really cool about this technique and why I love it so much is because I've been incorporating it into uh, acrylic pouring. You can use it on top of a jewelry box if you want. You can use it like I'm doing here on a turtle shell that I got from uh, this turtle came from Hobby Lobby. So many ideas you can come up with this. You just got to use your imagination. And the other thing that I really like about it is that pattern. And it's so easy to do. It makes just such an amazing effect. In the resin world, they usually use it in coasters and on tumblers. But in my world, I'm using it on everything. And now, here comes the fun part, coloring it in and making it stand out. These are chameleon pigments that I'm going to link in the description of this video. They're sold on Amazon in like a six-pack, five-pack. I can't remember what it was. You don't have to wet them down, although you can. Uh, with the resin surface, they stick to it by themselves. So I'm just showing you here, you can lightly brush them just over the surface. However, I want them to be more pronounced and that brighter green to not be so green. So what I'm going to end up doing is taking my gold green color shift paint and brushing that on there first, letting it dry and then come back in with my chameleon pigments to put over the top of the green gold. And I wanted to just show you the difference in the looks. So that's why I put a little bit of the chameleon flakes just on the resin surface by themselves. 
and now you're seeing me here at the green gold first and then again I'll go over it with the chameleon flakes but if you don't have chameleon flakes and you want to do this technique and get some shimmer on your texture you can absolutely use a metallic paint like a deco art or a folk art something that has some shimmer in it so now I'm going to just take the green gold and go over the entire shell just to tone it down a bit and have that green gold underneath my chameleon flakes. But again, I'm going to let it dry before I go ahead and add those flakes. I'm also going to do this to the fins and the head. So I'm just sort of pouncing on the color over the dried texture that I created the day before. And I'm going to fill that all in. And then once that's dry, I'll also come back in with the chameleon flakes and put those on top of those areas as well. So now that it's dry, I'm taking the chameleon. Again, no water or anything. And I'm just brushing it on with a dry brush. And it will cling because... Those metallic, I'm sorry, those chameleon flakes are almost like a, a very thin foil that is chopped up very fine. And if you have a plastic surface and you were ever to take something like a mica powder or in this case a flake and you try to put it on that surface, it would be impossible to get it off. It just clings to it, like almost gluing it down without gluing it. So... People always ask, how do you finish this piece? What I do personally is I spray everything with a matte varnish because I like the way it looks matte. You can, however, coat it in resin or you can go ahead and coat it in um, a, a gloss spray varnish. I like the way it looks just like this. And this is how it looks when it's done. I cannot tell you how happy I am with this piece. It is so shimmery and it reminds me of an old sea turtle that's been down at the bottom of the ocean for 50 years and it's got some, you know, crustaceans growing on the fins and uh, it's, it's just magnificent in person. I wish you could see it in person. I'm going to tell you this project was so easy I implore you to go out and get even, you know, even if it's a heart shape, it doesn't have to be a sea turtle. Create a little design on it with this texture and use a little bit of color and uh, the chameleon flakes and you'll be so happy that you did it. So why did I create this sea turtle? Well, I am celebrating something today and that is the addition of my first saltwater fish to my fish tank that I've been showing you over the last couple of weeks. Yes, I finally have a new friend in my tank and I cannot wait to show you. He is just the cutest little tiny fish that I've ever seen. His name is Da Vinci. Yes, Da Vinci fits the channel. And the reason for that is, is because he's a Da Vinci clownfish. So let me introduce you to Mr. Da Vinci himself. So this is my current fish tank situation. Yes, I know. What's that? What? What is that, Cookie? Cookie? Yeah. <laughs> she hasn't moved anyway I'm trying to find him oh, what what wow <laughs> what's that in there cookie what what it's a fishy it's a Da Vinci clownfish. Very active. He's very excited to be in his new home doing very well. 
And yes, I said that. It is a Da Vinci clownfish. Very, very fitting for this channel. This cat is in my face. What, honey girl? What do you want? Well, I know. You can't eat that fishy, though. That's our new friend. So anyway, that's the tank update for now. In about another week, I'm going to start getting some corals and another fish. Have to take this slowly. As much as I would love to just dump five fish in there all at once, you have to take it slow. So they adjust and get used to everything. And Oh, sorry, I'm not even on. Don't even have the fish on the camera. Anyway. That's a Da Vinci clownfish, and I've named him Da Fishy. <laughs> it's the little channel mascot, I guess, now. Anyway, check this out. Oh, my Lady Gaga. Look at that shimmer. Woo! That is one sexy piece of art. It's just so phenomenal, and the camera doesn't pick up a tenth of the beauty, but I'm just trying to show you the sparkle there on all the different areas, like the texture on the fins and the shell, really something else. And I cannot wait to do another, cannot wait. Anyway, here he is on my wall and um, you can either hang him or if you want, you can remove that uh, rope there and use some command strips on the back to hang them on the wall. But he is so, so pretty. I love it. This piece is available. If you're interested, you can email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com. And get that. That is just wonderful. It looks like a bunch of diamond, not diamonds, uh, rhinestone studs all over the shell. Very, very pretty. Very, very pretty. Wow. I just get mesmerized by it. It's just so pretty. And that texture, I just love that texture. Absolutely beautiful. So that's it for the art. Now I want to show you a brand new bar of soap that is ready to go to its new home. <laughs> Bars of soap ready to go to their new home. So let me just show you those quick and thank you so very much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to click like. Don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe if you are not subscribed already. Every Sunday, I release a new video at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So turn on that notification bell to all and you will be notified of my next video. So stand by for that soap and I'll see you next Sunday. Let me introduce you to Rose Quartz Cold Process Goat's Milk Soap. This one is really a simplistic beauty made with goat's milk, five different oils that are nourishing, hydrating, and moisturizing for the skin, kaolin clay, and has a very light rose floral note. I used a light pink cosmetic grade mica for the colorant and topped it off with biodegradable eco-friendly plant-based glitter on top and of course a little rose quartz stone now people say to me well how do i use this stone well you don't use it you just take it off and throw it in your garden it's just a little decoration that's all because these are hand cut bars of soap they are seven ounces or more and uh, if you want to know what other fragrances I have left, they are in the description of this video. And also, I'll probably be releasing a video this coming week 
showing you all the different bars I have available. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you so very much for joining me today. And until the next time, happy pouring.